This is my 1990 Nissan 300ZX. It's the base model. It was automatic, NA, slow, still was slow even after everything I did to it. But stock interior, just bucket seat, temporary transfer wheel. I did manual swap it, kept a little shift lock just so I always know. And a fun little Easter egg for Z owners that do know. Um, it was my daily driver for a year and a half. I put about 20,000 miles on it in that year and a half. And then it is fully stock interior except for the grass in the back. That's just to cover and keep the, the carpet nice. Um, it was extremely loud and it probably still will be when we're done with everything as we had dual teardrop side exits. It's unorthodox, but it was cool. It was one of one. Um, Sideways Customs made me some um, three inch teardrops for the rear. And I decided to move from North Carolina to Colorado. I'll put up a picture. I loaded up everything I owned in this car and I drove the 1700 miles. It was like 32 hours. The most obnoxious sounds ever since I had side exits and there's the highway barriers. I went basically deaf. Um, Drain the heat the whole time to keep the car nice and cool. It had zero issues. I didn't really have a lot of issues with this car. And I'll put up another picture. I had the engine bay fully tucked. It was nice. It was easy to work on for once. And if you own a Z32, you know, normally they're not. But I went to slush this past year. And I've been planning a swap for a very long time. Uh, BC 300Z. The guy taught me almost everything I know about Zs. He... RB swapped his in Hawaii like a fucking madman and then ever since then I've been in love with you know more straight sixes I didn't want to do an RB I didn't want to do a 2J I couldn't do an LS I couldn't bring myself to do an LS yes they're great they work I don't like this car sounding like an LS so either tonight or tomorrow and this is gonna be made in the future so it'll pop up afterwards there's a motor that's going in here that I ordered in June. It is 32 inches long. Um, and then, fun fact, from not the top of the firewall, but after the divot to right here on the core support is, I believe, 32 and a half or 33 inches. So some massaging will be done, some reworks in here and whatnot, and then I got to fix some patchworks from the battery tray and the wheel well. I don't want to cut the core support. I want it to latch. I want it to close. I don't want it sticking out of the hood. It might. We'll see. But this is my major project here. But in order like to do I a swap, more, um, I'm going to need a lot of garage space. So we're going to start with this. And we're going to see what we end up with. And it's as clean as it's going to need to be. The motor is showing up in about 15 minutes. It's just going to sit over here. I do have some stuff on there. But as soon as it shows up, I got to skedaddle and had to work. Pebbles. This is my Ford Barra. I imported it from Australia about two and a half, three months ago. Wired a guy to a New York bank account. $2,400 from Barrel of the World. Phenomenal people. Mez, been helping me out the whole time. Got stuck in the Panama Canal. Took forever in customs. Finally got to Indianapolis. Courier was more than happy to make it a lot cheaper instead of paying freight shipping to bring this bad boy over. I'm going to unbox it. I'm excited. It's going in my Nissan 300ZX. It's a 1990. It was a NA Auto. Then it was an NA Manual. And now there's no motor or transmission in it. So I've been waiting for this to get started on everything. I have a few parts, but everything's expensive. I work a normal job. I'm just a dude. So with this Harbor Freight little, little razor, I'm going to see how far I can open this up and see it for the first time with you guys because I'm super happy, excited and still out of money. But, let's get it done. I did spray paint wherever it said my name on here, so 
I'm not gonna dox myself like a dumbass. This thing's working a lot better than I thought it would. And the first thing we got is a little box. Which, I didn't think they'd give me the pedal, but we got the ECU, the pedal, the loom, and the starter. So I'm actually gonna open this up, see how everything looks. They gave me snacks! I got some Tim Tams in here. I don't know if these are good or not. I'm gonna assume they are. I'm probably gonna eat some tonight. But fuck yeah, I got snacks. Whole reason I bought this motor. Stickers and snacks, all right? You guys are like me. I know you do the same. Um, and then we also got Vegemite B vitamins. Thank you, Mez. I, I appreciate it a lot. And then, of course, what I've been wanting is some Bear of the World. It's going to be very hard to see on camera. But Bear of the World stickers that I love so much. I will plaster everywhere because, as the website says, Bear of the World. It's the best motor ever. It's not, but it is to me. Then we got the awesome little little ECU. This was a automatic with 198,000 kilometers, which I think it brings it down to like 120, 130,000 miles. And as an automatic, it wasn't beat on in my eyes. That's how some motors work whenever you get a motor. So this is reflash actually for a manual ECU for me. So if, and when I get a Hall Tech, either I go full standalone or they do actually make piggybacks that can just plug right into this. I can stop it in a car. Depends on time and money and sponsors and money money so next thing we got the loom in here i kind of don't want to pull these wires out so i'm just gonna show it wires this does stuff i'm gonna find out what because i'll be honest a big part of the swap i don't know what the fuck i'm doing but i ordered the motor it's here and i'm gonna do my best with what i got i'm gonna raise this up a little bit so it's out of the way who wants to stay there we go All right, the big reveal for both you and I. I'm super excited about this. My wallet, not so much. That's a motor, all right. This is my Barra. I'm super happy. This is the FG model, which means it is rear sump. Looking at the sump, it's fucking massive. I still most likely will have to get it modified, which is welding aluminum, which I don't know how to do. I'm going to pay someone or find someone that knows how to do it here in Colorado. I'm in Colorado Springs. I moved here from North Carolina. Um, but besides that, this is an FG. So dual overhead cam, rear sump. I believe the BFs were front sump and all that jazz. But since the VG30 that came in the 300ZX, whenever it had it, which is a awesome stock motor i loved it uh i'll put up a picture again i probably already have but i took the fuck out of that motor i made it pretty i made it easy to work on i loved it it was still slow so i had to go and outsource something a little different um like i probably said earlier i didn't want a 2j i didn't want an rb i want an inline six i didn't want to go bmw maybe even an sr20 would have been fucking awesome but i thought why not and long before um, LZ did it or anything, I had a, a picture on my phone of just a cool looking motor. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Did research, found out what the fuck a Barra is and how much I love it and how much I wanted one. Um, and yeah, power steering, alternator, crank pulley, AC, which I should probably keep. I don't, it is race car. So I might keep it. I might not. It came with it. The fact that it came with it. Might as well use it. Um, it is, I believe I remember correctly, it is like 32 inches long. 
This is a long, heavy motor. I love it. It's awesome. Um, from firewall to the uh, radiator core support in the 300ZX is 33 and a half inches. So I don't have a lot of leeway. Um, I'm hoping it won't hit the heater core. It might on the back end here. It might just clear whenever I take this heat shielding off. I don't know. I have to wait uh, until Monday where I have more time. Because like I said, I work a job. I double tomorrow. I just got off a double today. I waited for this to show up. It showed up. Put it in the garage. Ran to work. Came back. And here we are now. I have engine stand ready. I have some nice long bolts. Nice and ready to put it on here. I don't have washers. I forgot to buy washers. Um, so I probably can't put it on here tonight as much as I want to. But the goal with this is in eight months running and driving, which is very, very ambitious and very, very expensive. It's probably gonna take longer. Um, I hope it doesn't. Hopefully doing these videos and documenting this because no one, as far as I know, has put a bear on the Z32. There's one guy on the forum right now that has just mounted it in there. Um, and then the only other picture I have on the internet is about 16 pixels, you can fucking count them. And it's a very far away picture, about 100 feet away. Uh, but you can see that there's a bear in a Z32 with the hood popped. And that's about it. There's no information. I'm putting these in a Z32. Um, RB's are already long. 2J's are already long. So people don't really look look for these or any of that. But I did, apparently. So here, here, here we are. I don't know what I'm doing, like I said. I don't have the money to do this. Uh, so hopefully, as we document and go through this process together sponsors pop up something happens if not i'm gonna power through don't let your dreams just be dreams um i may be broke but i have a bear in my garage and that's good enough for me besides that transmission wise i guess i should go over that because i got three options none of them are cheap unfortunately option number one is t56 they bolt right up no problem they're expensive hard to break but expensive Option two is TR6060. Also hard to break, bolts right up. Also expensive. Very expensive. Option three is there's an adapter kit. Only unfortunate part about the adapter kit is $1,600. But it's for the flywheel, um, the hardware for it, and of course the uh, adapter section and whatnot. But it adapts it to a CD09, which is a lot easier for me to get over here in the States than it is over there in Australia. Um, also expensive. But... I, it's much easier for me to get spare transmissions of CD09s. You know, maybe if I get a shitty one for $600, blow it up. I have another one that I bought for $1,100 or something. A lot easier than just going out and buying a T56. Unless, you know, the opportunity presents itself. But it would be cool to pair this back up to something Nissan. Besides, you know, forward on forward on forward on forward. Um, I'm going to keep it as JDM as possible. I don't know what styling I'm going to do. Maybe white and purple. Purple has a special place in my heart. It's a cool color. Um, I'm keeping the car. It's stock color, KH2. I love that Nissan color. I did want to go LP2, which is midnight purple for you guys that don't know. Um, paint's expensive. Respay is a lot cheaper. There's some minor body work I need to do. Nothing really major. Mainly engine bay, and then there's like one small rust spot. Uh, it was a Pennsylvania car, and I got scut out free. Nothing structural. It's all visual stuff. I don't know if you guys ever ordered a motor from overseas. I haven't. This is the first car I've also ever engine swapped i did have a 77 Triumph spitfire that i was gonna put a motorcycle motor in and then i bought this motor i'm like i'm gonna have no time for that i rent here my landlord is fucking awesome he likes car stuff like i do but i couldn't just leave 13 project cars out there as much as i would love to so sold it to a good friend that lives right down the street um so this is the first one i ever did and like i said earlier went through mez phenomenal people at bear the world.com i'm definitely gonna put them down in the link where I get all my stuff. It's not Australian dollars, so you're like, man, I'm about to spend 1400 bucks. Then you go through, you know, everything it does to the conversion rate, and then boom, all of a sudden I'm only spending $780, and I love it because right now the USD is stronger than Australian dollars. So I love that part about it. It's actually pretty, pretty damn cheap to get one of these and work on them. It's just you got to wait for parts to come from Australia. Uh, but like I said, this was $2,400 from them, FG with 198,000 kilometers on it. And that is, bought it. They put it, They you saw how well wrapped it is. It's secured on here phenomenally. Uh, phenomenally, however you want to say it. 
Um, and it was shipped all the way around through the Panama Canal up to New York. And then they have some uh, brokers slash, you know, pe uh, people up in Indianapolis. So they went, they picked it up, and they're like, hey, we have a courier that comes up to Denver. I was like, that's perfect. You'll be there in two weeks. Even better. And he dropped it off today. That was another $450 through him. So right at $28.50, shipped, delivered for this awesome fucking motor. Fully complete with ECU reflashed. Whole wiring harness, starter, the whole nine yards. Now, what enticed me to do this is I've been thinking about it for a while. You know, it's hard to pull that trigger on a big project that shuts down your car because Z was my daily driver for a year and a half. Zero issues, never broke down on me. I took care of it. I loved it. Um, I got it 120,000 miles. I got it to 152 and then got that VG out of there, right? Uh, and I was, I was just thinking, man, I need to do something to this car. But it's my only car. I end up buying other cars. I have some dailies here and there. And I went to Slush. Slush was fucking awesome. There's stuff like that in North Carolina, but not as cool, not as big and whatnot. And I had such a great time seeing all the different builds, all the hard work and whatnot, that two days later after the event is when I started tearing shit out. And I was like, I'm getting the bear. I'm ordering it. I'm ordering it. And a lot of people always say that. I'm going to manual swap my car. I'm going to do this. I'm going to motor swap it. If I say I'm going to do something... My ADHD kicks in. I'm going to fucking do it. Whether I'm broke, whether I'm living in my car or whatever. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it with you guys. This is going to be my first fucking video. Clearly, it fucking sucks. But here we are. We're learning. We're paving the path for anyone else that wants to put a Vera in their 300ZX. So, I hope you're here for the journey. You're going to watch me fuck up. You're going to watch me say the wrong things. You're going to watch me do the wrong things. You're going to see me hurt myself. You're going to see blood, sweat, and tears go into this. But it's going to be fun. And at the end, I'm going to get the doo -doo 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 And it's going to be awesome. Like I said, the goal is eight months. Mainly in time for slush again. If not, it's okay. We're having fun here.